It's strange the things we choose to protect. Some lambs we keep as pets, some lambs we slaughter. Some trees we cut down, others we protect. There isn't a whole lot of rhyme or reason to it, it's just how we are. The casual overlap of ruthlessness and selflessness is in many ways the root story of our species. The undying union of creation and destruction is not just our history, but all history. Everything we are is a choice and a balance. And here in the north of Okinawa, there is a towering reminder of that balance. A banyan tree. This is the Himpun Banyan tree of Nago, a working class city in the northern part of the Japanese island of Okinawa. Although today it stands in the center of a roadway just down the road from a beer factory, don't let that fool you. It's been an incredibly important part of this community for nearly 300 years. Ten generations have stood before its trunk, and ten generations have shaded themselves under its canopy. To the people of Nago, it matters. That's why they keep it around, even when that means installing steel beams to hold up its branches. In northern Okinawan mythology, banyan trees are said to contain the Kijimuna, a youthful spirit that lives in their trunks. It's a child's god, a precocious baby that plays pranks on whomever crosses its path. Sometimes it even takes people on its back to leap over mountains and ocean bays, only to then throw them off in distaste when they fart. Because Kijimuna hates when people fart. Which begs the question why it spends so much time with children. They're not exactly known for holding it in. Yet, according to the legends, only children are pure enough to see the boy in the tree. Adults have all lost their way. They no longer understand the value of a silly little god. And perhaps that's a good place to start with this story. Or end it, depending on how you look at it. Because this week, thousands of creators around the world are asking you to take part in their attempt to plant trees. 20 million trees, if they're to be believed. I actually think it's going to be more myself, but 20 million little Kijimunas pranking the entire world. Presumably a very good thing. But if there's any tack you can expect me to take about this topic, it's cynicism. After all, cynicism is kind of like my brand at this point. So let's talk trees. Humanity as a species is cutting down nearly 20 million trees every single day. And with the opening of the Brazilian Amazon under their new unapologetically cruel leader, it's hard to see that slowing down. Even at the low estimates, it's only two days. So it isn't as if YouTube's greatest feat is going to be saving the world from the rest of us. For all the great work of the Destin Sandlins and Mark Robers and Jimmy Donaldsons and Alex Reichs, there's always a Joey Saladino or a Jake Paul. Ruthlessness and selflessness, they're the two sides of the human coin. And I think that one of our greatest mistakes as people is only ever thinking that we should, or for that matter could, be taking part in one. One of the biggest problems we face when looking at our environment is that we so willingly see the destruction as understandable and perhaps even inevitable, but we collapse in the face of creation. To many of us, it seems unnatural, almost inhuman, to even attempt to fight back, because we know we're just going to cut it right back down again. It's as if any attempt to push back against entropy is defying the base state of the universe. But all of our best actions defy entropy. It just takes work. Taking the energies that have been consumed in our destruction and expressing them back as creation is the true value of work. Art, science, humanity. The continuous pushback against inevitable loss is our greatest achievement as a species. And it's happening every day, on repeat, forever. And it's happening completely of our own volition. Feeling hopeless in the face of destruction is far less human than trying to stand up to it, even if you know you're going to lose. I don't think anybody's expecting YouTube to save the world with these trees. I certainly don't, and I'm making a video on it. If anything, it's just a drop in the bucket of what both India and Pakistan have done in this year alone. It's probably just a drop in the bucket of what it took to make Mr. Beast famous. But to me, this isn't about the sheer number of roots being put in the ground. It's about a shift in culture. It's about a raised awareness of our new media leaders understanding their increased role in the world. I wish I could say I led today's charge. 
but I'm getting old. I haven't seen that Kiji Muna in a damn long time. But Jimmy Donaldson, Mr. Beast, as many of you know him, is barely 21 years old. At least, if Wikipedia is to be trusted, I've never actually asked him. Chances are you know better than me. But despite his age, he has more power, more clout, and more viewership than any of us could ever dream of having. He's bigger than most major media outlets. People listen to him. Children listen to him. And they're the ones who asked him to help. He's taking the power that they requested he take and using it to convince them to join the fight that they started. Even if just for this moment, even if just as a meme, Hundreds, if not thousands of creators have answered his call. People who would otherwise sell beauty products. People who would otherwise make music. People who would otherwise travel the world telling sad stories about rocks. He's leading us all. And even if most of the people involved are simply doing it for their careers, just so they don't get left out of the big meme of the day, they are taking part. You don't need to be perfect to be good. And that crafter of viral video consumerism is leading us all towards 20 million more trees. Okay, yeah, it's one day in the life of our species, but that's one day that wouldn't have happened otherwise. An entire day of destruction reversed for fun. It's a day where powerful people can realize just how powerful they are. And I'm not talking about YouTubers, I mean you. Maybe Jimmy is a little too old to see the Kijimuna, but his fans aren't. They asked, hell, they demanded he do this. And because of that, there are millions upon millions of children who are going to hear this message. They're the ones growing up into the world, and they're the ones who will have to live in the aftermath of what we're doing now. And look at what they're asking. I could not be more envious of those who can still look into the banyan and see God. They're the ones who will grow up to fight back against this destruction, to put in the work that we all should be putting in right now. Maybe through this flippant little lesson, they'll learn that just because we need to tear things down to survive doesn't mean we can't try to build them back up again. All it takes is leadership. The world is a complicated place. Not every lamb is here to be saved, but neither is every here to be slaughtered. The Kijimuna lives in that tree. And whether or not you're too old to see that still, you can join us in creating 20 million more. <laughs> but whatever you do, don't fart. This is rare earth. Did you get the fart joke? That's called a callback. That's a callback joke. I wrote that. I'm funny.